So this new study focuses on a site called Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park, which is really super cool because it's a place where several skeletons of these giant marine reptiles called ichthyosaurs were left in situ, and so you can actually still see them in the ground. There's been a lot of questions over the years about why there are so many skeletons on this one layer, and that's what we endeavored to go and figure out. And it turns out the picture is even bigger than we thought. These giant ichthyosaurs, an animal called Shonisaurus, are found throughout the canyon. And they're about the only large vertebrate animal that we find. And we think the reason that they're there has something to do with reproduction. They're gathering um, and maybe reproducing or giving birth uh, because we only find large adults and babies. Ichthyosaurs are super cool marine reptiles that live during the age of dinosaurs. They're not dinosaurs though, they're a completely different type of reptile. And they looked a little bit like a giant dolphin in the sense that they had a streamlined body, big flippers, and even a dorsal fin and a tail fin. This particular animal, Shonisaurus popularis, is one of the largest ever reaching over 40 feet long. One of the really curious things we discovered is that there's lots of adult animals and a number of specimens of babies or even embryos preserved at this site, but nothing in between. We don't have any teenagers or animals that are just a few years old. And so that got us thinking, what sort of setting would give us that sort of population structure? And the best we can hypothesize, it seems to be uh, accumulation of animals that are getting together either to reproduce, to mate, or give birth. So if you're thinking about these giant ichthyosaurs, you know, congregating in one area to reproduce, it might sound a bit strange, but a great a modern example that we have is gray whales in the North Pacific Ocean. They spend a lot of their time sort of up in the Pacific Northwest and near Alaska, but they congregate and move down to Baja, California to reproduce. For the most part, we can't tell whether individuals are male or female in the fossil record, but there are a few exceptions and we have one of them at the site. So if you find an, a skeleton that still has embryos inside of it, then obviously it's a female and actually, that's one of the cool things is that one of the original skeletons that was excavated in the 50s and 60s had embryonic parts of a skeleton preserved inside of it. And the original discoverers had noted it, but it never got studied or described in the literature. So we were the first to sort of look into that specimen and confirm, yes, this is an embryo. And so this particular individual is a female. One of the really cool things about discovering evidence for this reproductive grouping is that this is a pattern we see in most uh, large vertebrate animals in the ocean today. So things like whales and sharks and all different sorts of other animals. We've now documented the same pattern over 230 million years ago, showing that this is something that's been going on since the first dinosaurs, if not before. What's really crazy is that even though so many different skeletons have been found of this particular species, there were still a lot of basic questions about how the animal lived, what it ate, things like that. Some people thought maybe it lacked teeth in its jaws and so was eating small, soft-bodied prey. And one of the exciting things about our study is that we found new material that showed these animals were full of teeth and really big teeth. In my hand over here, uh, I've got part of the upper jaw and you can see all the different tooth sockets in the jaw that were full of large teeth. And this is one of those big teeth in my other hand and it's got big cutting ridges for eating large prey. The uniqueness of Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park is several things. One is that it's got this really giant ichthyosaur. These are truly whale-sized animals up to 40 feet long or, or longer. And it's one of the largest ichthyosaurs found anywhere in the world. Um, then the fact that you have so many skeletons found in one place is really unusual. Uh, and then finally, the fact that you can go and visit and actually see some of the skeletons still in the ground. In trying to figure out why there were so many different skeletons of this one giant ichthyosaur, Shonisaurus, one of the things we had to do was rule out whether there might have been some sort of environmental disaster or something that killed off these animals all in one go. 
And so to do that, we really had to look to the rocks and figure out what sort of environment it was and whether there was any evidence of climate change or something like that. So not only did we look at the rocks themselves, which have all sorts of different clues about how deep the water was and how much oxygen there was in the water, but we actually looked at the geochemistry. So the different types of elements that are preserved in the rocks. In particular, we were interested in mercury, which is a great tracer of large volcanic eruptions. So when we get these really giant eruptions that we call large igneous provinces, they erupt a trace amount of mercury into the atmosphere and that can get into the water. What we found were there were no elevated levels of mercury, so there weren't any big volcanic eruptions. And the other lines of evidence from geochemistry agreed with that. There was no big environmental disturbance that killed off these animals. And so that got us thinking, about more biological reasons for why there's all these animals here. This isn't the only place in Nevada where Shonisaurus fossils have been found, and the other areas are even more poorly studied. So one of the things we wanna do is go to those other areas and see if we see the same pattern in terms of the types of animals that are preserved, their age, structure, et cetera. Um, or whether something different is going on so we can get a better regional picture and also understand how long this was going on through time. Check out our website for more information about this really cool story, including a link to an interactive 3D model of the bone bed that's at Berlinic Theosaur State Park that we've developed in collaboration with the Smithsonian.